The Book of True Life, Teaching 4 of 366. The Master Teaches, The Spiritual Awakening and the Mission of Charity, Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord Says, Each time you come to listen to my word, you feel that you leave your suffering in me. But when I return to you, why do you again offer me your heart full of bitterness? It is time that you learn to retain my peace. This is the era of preparation, and everywhere Trees sprout in towns, cities, and regions to offer their spiritual shade to all wanderers. Those wanderers are the multitudes who continually come before this manifestation, and who, on listening to my word, which tells them that they have already received shelter under the foliage of the Tree of Life in other eras, recognize deep within that they have been unable to take advantage of the times in order to go near the promised land. Which one of you, realizing that he has a new opportunity to redeem himself, will again deny me as he did in previous eras? Who will neglect his mission and disregard the voice of his conscience? Who will remain sleeping in the slumber of his materialism after being awakened by this voice? Your spirit has been shaken when, in spite of your uneasiness, you have heard the Father tell you that He loves you, that He forgives you and helps you to regenerate in order to come to Him. You have humbled yourselves before the divine love, and full of joy you arise in search of the sick, so that they may hasten to the presence of the Master and be healed in Him. Behold the tree, offering man its spiritual fruits. I am the tree of eternal life. Remember Christ upon the cross. He was like a tree, whose arms, like branches, extended lovingly to give shade to mankind. His words, slowly spoken to the multitude, and his blood falling drop by drop, were like fruits shed from the divine tree. The year of 1950 is near, the one in which you will cease to hear this word, which is a heavenly fruit for you. Then the tree, and the fruit, and the shade will be in your spirit. Those who, in that time, are material-minded and fanatical with my word, will try to retain me and will ask me to speak to them in this form a while longer. But that cannot be, for I have let you know my will, and it is written so. Those nightingales, who have transmitted my word, will become silent for this manifestation and I will reward their obedience with the gift of speech and of inspiration. Still, you are unaware of what my exalted judgments have in store for those times. From this day forward, I say to you, at that blessed hour, I want everyone to comply with my will and be obedient and gentle as sheep. However, it is not my will that you judge one another. It will be my perfect justice that will judge each one of my children. Hear me, O oh my people. Do not leave me speaking alone in the wilderness. You still have time to meditate and learn. Let no one seek to do his own will, although man can use his temporarily because the justice of the Father will be upon him, and only what is decreed for him will be fulfilled.
Be prepared, O prophets of this third era, so that you can alert the multitudes not to be caught unaware by the false Christs and false communications. Do not doubt these words only because I am transmitting them through a humble and backward spokesman. Arise and reveal these teachings to everyone, for the time is very short. A single word of enlightenment will be enough to keep your fellow men awakened. To exchange defects for qualities will be the noble aspiration of the future spiritual followers, those who will establish a superior kingdom upon the ruins of the human existence. It will be the generations of the future who will establish that world of morality, science and high spirituality. But you who are present can do a great deal. With a little goodwill, you can remove the ruins, the fragments of a past of errors and violations, leaving from that only the light of a long and painful experience. If you make an effort to conduct yourselves along the path of noble aspirations, so that your mind can be occupied with virtues and your lips be the faithful instrument of truth and inspiration, which will germinate in your spirit, I will bless you and allow you to behold the light of that kingdom of peace, which together you will build. Although your feet are touching the earth, do not allow your desires to rest upon it. Elevate your aspirations more and more without forgetting to give to God that which is God's and to the world that which belongs to it. My word is for all, but not everyone receives it in the same manner. Many listen to it with indifference, but there are others who could not live without the pleasure of listening to me. Among these, I have beheld the one who comes without having partaken of material food, and who, on hearing my word, has forgotten his needs and privations, and upon leaving the house of prayer, he has felt so filled with strength, hope, peace, and consolation that he has whispered to himself, Surely, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which comes from God. Only I can behold what each heart conceals without anyone knowing it. I find little sheep who are sad, thirsty, sick or weary, creatures without love and who nevertheless tell me when they hear me. I am happy just listening to the Divine Master, for all my sorrows disappear and my heart overflows with light and happiness. Others, on the other hand, are lethargic and will not allow their hearts to be moved, as was the case during the first days when they heard the voice of their master. But how can the lesson be continued when some are attentive and others are not, when some feel me and others remain insensitive? O oh, my disciples, return to your former selves, listen to me and feel me as you did before. Remember when you confessed that this revelation was your life and the light of your destiny. Do not forget that today I say to you that what you need will be granted when the right moment comes. Fill your lamp again with oil so that the flame of faith and wisdom will glow once more. Do not slumber, be watchful and pray, for the master might surprise you entering your abode as before, as in those days of spiritual enthusiasm, when at each step you felt my presence. You will behold how your existence again will be illuminated by the light which was obscured without your knowledge, and it will again restore your confidence in a future filled with abundance and wisdom.
Give me, one and all, your thoughts. Offer me your heart. Each sorrow and hardship will be like flowers which I accept. Flowers of suffering, bitterness, and disappointment. But flowers at least. For they are an expression of purification, of a fragrance which is elevated to me. Enter into silence, O spirits who receive my light. While your heart expresses its sorrow, leave in me your tears, and in return accept my balsam. The Father, the Supreme Being, is beholding you. Do not feel defeated or powerless before him, for when he created you, he gave you his strength. If your sorrows are intense, his mercy will be greater. Perform deserving deeds of faith and love, and do not doubt that he will guide you forever toward his kingdom of kindness and wisdom. O oh, humanity, have confidence in me, and when you feel yourselves weakening, give me the burden of your cross while you regain your strength. Know that this world is a fountain of purification, and that on leaving it to return to your true mansion, your spirit will glow like a light in space. Remember that I told you, he who seeks me will find me, he who seeks will find. You have sought me and find yourselves before me. But there are also those who, seeking me, do not find me for they look in places where I cannot be. These even doubt my existence, unaware that they have me very close, that they bear me within themselves. They do not find me within their own hearts, for they are like closed temples. The peace and the light which exists in them remains hidden. However, that is the true sanctuary where I dwell waiting for you to enter to speak to you of profound revelations and to explain the reason for many mysteries. When you have entered, you know from where you came and where destiny is taking you, and you are surprised at having found me where you previously saw nothing. But he who is not aware of this sanctuary builds his temple in the material, erects an altar, and upon it places a god made by his own hands. Until time passes and he is convinced of the imperfection of his worship, he awakens and arises in search of the spiritual God, the God of truth, the only God, because the one that he forged had nothing to give him, for it lacked life. It is God who has given man life, the one who created him, and not man who can create gods and give them life. As you listen to this word, you are gaining understanding. When that illumination is complete within your spirit, you will say to me, Master, the miracle is accomplished. Thus, you will understand what the spiritual deeds are that I have been performing during these times. Your spirituality will not demand the miracles and proofs of the first and second eras in order to believe in me. Today, you will behold spiritually the heavenly mana descent. You will behold the water of repentance emanate from rocks which are the hearts of great sinners. You shall behold those who are dead to the world of faith and virtue resurrect to life. Those who are ailing from moral disorders cleansed, and those blind to the truth open their eyes to behold my splendor. If my birth as man during the second era was a miracle, and my spiritual ascension after my bodily death was another miracle, truly I say to you that my communication during these times through a human faculty is also a spiritual miracle. 
up to the last of my prophecies, all will be fulfilled during this time. I leave you my three testaments, forming just one. He who has first known the Father as love, sacrifice, and forgiveness, let him know him fully during this period, so that instead of fearing his justice, he may love and venerate him. If you were devoted to the law during the first era, it was for fear that the divine justice would punish you. But for that reason, I sent my living word so that you would understand that God is love. Today, my light comes to you so that you will not lose yourselves and will be able to reach the end of the road by being faithful to my law. You have fully served the world, and it has treated you badly. But when were you told that man would be a slave of the world? Do you not know, or do you not remember, that you were told you would be sovereign on earth? How many times do you have to appear before my presence like the prodigal son? It is my wish that you come to me filled with goodness, virtue, and humility. I found you covered with spiritual leprosy, and just by desiring it, I healed you. In the same manner, I want you to heal your brethren, without feeling repulsion because of their sins. It will be then that your deeds will testify that you love me, and not your lips that will proclaim it without your heart feeling it. You will not imitate the Pharisees, who, in the synagogue, made a display of being deserving before God, and publicly, through the streets, made a show of charity. Guard my lessons, so that you may study them carefully, for the day draws near when you will cease to hear this word through a human faculty, and then those who learned and understood will be as strong as invincible warriors. Once prepared, you will speak, inspired by me, and in this simple manner you will teach mankind. While some of my new disciples will have to go in search of men, others will have to wait for their brethren to arrive, searching my teaching in them. O oh, my people, explain my word and my lesson to the children. Behold that my doctrine does not hold back before age or sex, it is for the spirit. Give my teaching to children, simplifying and placing it within their understanding, but never forget that the best method of explaining my lessons will be through the virtue of your life, in which they will behold your acts of charity, patience, your humility and spirituality. That will be the best way to teach them. Talk to them about Jesus, speak to them about Mary, and all of those men and women who have brought to the world a message of light. That is the way you will show them the way to me. Tell them that on the day of rest, your spirit penetrates my sanctuary in order to glorify me. For you dedicate six days to your duties and human concerns, so that you will have one day of rest, and in it devote a few moments to meditation and worship of your Lord. There you will find me waiting for you, always expecting your prayer, which is the language that you use when you speak to me of your troubles, your love, or when you give me thanks. You have entered my sanctuary, formed by multitudes anxious to hear my divine word. And truly I say to you, that I have poured out a torrent of teachings upon you. This word will be a fertile seed within your spirit, so that you will be converted into my laborers. You come with gratitude in your heart, 
because before telling you to go and spread charity, I granted you a miracle by either giving you health, peace, or some other lost benefit. Today, in your gratitude, you say to me, Master, what can I do to make up for so much love? Then I indicate the vast fields so that you may clear them of weeds, rocky ground, and sow the seed of love, peace, and charity. Before I send you, I fill you with strength and faith so that you will not weaken or be intimidated in the struggle. Many times you will see your wheat sprout and grow among weeds and thorns, and you will care for it there until harvest time comes in order to separate the wheat from the weeds. The more suffering it takes to cultivate those fields, the greater your love for them and your satisfaction on seeing them flourish. Truly, I say to you, that this spiritual wheat which you cultivate under my teaching will be the bread of eternal life for your descendants beyond the seventh generation. Hear me unceasingly, O disciples who find yourselves rejoicing. I speak to your spirit through these impure lips of men through whom I communicate. But truly, I say to you, that my word is not contaminated with that impurity. It is clean when it reaches your spirit. Study my teaching in order to understand what is the field, what is the seed, the water, and the tool, and you will know what is the perfect way to prepare, sow, irrigate, and cultivate the soil. The laborer who works in this manner will be able to distinguish the good from the bad fruit. Behold, how many have arisen, believing that they know how to sow, and instead of this wheat, they have sown strange seeds, which on fructifying have produced thorns. I want the laborer of the third era to emerge. For this reason, I have called upon the great multitudes, so that those who are to follow me during this period will arise from among them. Thus, while I give you one lesson after another, the time draws near in which you will undertake your mission completely. Along your path, you will find fields sown during other eras, and which only await your watering and cultivating. These are the spirits wherein lies the seed of faith received from the time of the prophets and my apostles. Some carry the seed of the first era, others that of the first and second, and in them you will deposit the one which I have given you in this third, since you are already possessors of the seed of the three eras, for which I call you Trinitarians. This is the life and the work which awaits you. Why do you fear the struggle when I am giving you everything? Why do I see tears in the eyes of some laborers when the most difficult part of the struggle has not even begun? I want you to believe that I am close to you that your gifts are a reality, that all that you ask for your spiritual perfection during your trying moments and ordeals, I will grant. I do not want to see any more weaknesses in you. Most of you, disregarding your spirit, come to ask for the body, bread, balsam, employment, and for each one I perform a miracle, because these also will be testimonies that tomorrow will kindle faith and hope within the hearts of your brethren. However, do not ask for so little. That which appears to be so much to you will soon end. It is best that you ask for eternal blessings, spiritual benefits. In addition, I will grant you that which pertains to the world.
I have more to give you than you can possibly ask of me. Therefore, do not be satisfied with so little. I can transform your hearts into inexhaustible fountains of charity. I can fill your minds with inspiration and your lips with words. I can give you the gift of healing and the power to disperse all darkness and overcome evil. He who has these aspirations will behold within himself the virtues which had been ignored within his spirit. Who will close his door to whoever knocks when he possesses such gifts? What pathways will seem long and rocky to the one who is blessed with my strength? What seasons will seem so inclement if he can have command over the very elements? O oh, my disciples, your greatest mission will be that of charity. Many times you will perform it secretly, without any display, not letting your left hand know what your right hand has given. But there will be occasions when your charity will have to be witnessed by your brethren in order for them to learn to share it. Forget about payment. I am the Father who rewards with justification the deeds of his children without neglecting a single one. I have told you that if you offer a glass of water with true charity, that gesture will not remain unrewarded. Blessed are those who, on approaching, say to me, Master, I expect no reward for my deeds. It is enough that I exist, knowing that I am your son, so that my spirit will be filled with happiness. And I say to you, you come weeping because you have lost your way, your health, and your ability to work, and it is then that you remember your heavenly Father. Behold, I am here before you. You are before the Master, and the reason for your coming is unimportant. Come and listen to my lessons. Some are for my disciples, but there are also others dedicated to beginners. Do not feel humiliated in finding yourselves among brothers who are advanced in my teachings before whom you try to conceal your ignorance. They also came as you did. You, who are just beginning, learn the divine lesson well, so that you may have something to offer those who will come after you. Let no one be surprised at my coming to seek my new disciples from among the scum redeeming them with my word, and afterward sending them to mankind with a message of regeneration, of life, and of light for their brethren. Among sin, imperfection, and profanation of this people, the light of my spirit has manifested itself during this era. Thus I have come battling to overcome that darkness, until I make the light shine. Blessed are all those who, closing their eyes to so much human imperfection and raising themselves above so much misery, have been able to find my presence within my new manifestation. This rude and sinful people will continue to be polished and cleansed, for from generation to generation it will manifest my spiritual work with greater perfection. Stop being what you were in the past. Do away with primitive worship, bad habits, and strive toward your spiritual improvement. I came surprising you precisely at the time proclaimed by Jesus and the prophets of my new coming. Now, as my promise is being fulfilled, you will behold sin at its highest level of perversity, ambition, and human hatred being manifested in wars 
as a result of the darkness which envelops the spirit of mankind during these times. And when the darkness became more dense, a divine ray of light descended to rip it asunder, becoming a human word to say to men, love one another. Be watchful and pray, and do not judge one another, so that I will not have to repeat to you, he who is free from sin, let him cast the first stone. My peace be with you.